enjoyed your lunch. Um, yeah, uh, thank you to uh, Mola for uh, this introduction. I hope you all remember where you don't only get out your invoices from, but maybe also some personalized sure. postcards, letters, and so on, and which is actually the main topic as of today. So we are talking about how Flaconi is integrating the direct mail channel into their um, customer-centric yeah. approach and also to take it into the another, another level. My name is Julia Fokkerud. I am working for Optilize uh, since 2018, and I'm really, really happy that Flaconi teamed up with us today and Marit joins me for this talk today. Yeah, hi, I'm Marit Quartz, um, and I joined Flaconi this year as a CRM manager, um, where I'm mostly responsible for the automated lifecycle part and also the print part of the automated lifecycle, um, which is only natural for me because I have a lot of previous experience with print marketing and also um, the operational process. Yeah, Flaconi, some of you might know it. Um, it's one of the leading online beauty pure players of Germany. Um, the common misconception is that we only do fragrance. It's not the case anymore. That's how we started. Uh, currently, we have everything that you need for your beauty needs. Uh, we have more than 55,000 products by over 900 brands from luxury to um, drugstore. And last year we made over 300 million in revenue, um, all guided by the mission to make our customers feel beautiful in their own way every day. And that's why we also um, coined our slogan, which is find your beauty every day. <laughs> now it's working. So a few words about Optilize to those of you who might not know already. Um, Optilize is a software which is used to run direct mail in a more automated and customer-centric way. So we are working with uh, nearly 400 customers um, across Europe and I'm really happy to actually have seen some of our customers here face-to-face -face since it's been a long time. Um, we are um, active in over 20, years, uh, 20 um, countries across Europe. And one thing that I really would like to point out is, of course, um, since we're sending out a physical product which might have an impact in the environment and so on and so forth, um, that we are 100% um, carbon neutral. So all the effects which arise when actually producing something with paper resources that we are um, taking charge of it and uh, neutralize um, the carbon footprint with some project within Germany. Yeah, today we heard this question a lot. How does your company value CRM and how did you make them appreciate it and actually get the money for it? And at Flaconi, it's actually pretty easy because um, two of the main value pillars that we have already support the values of CRM. One of them is trust and data always. We love that. And also putting the customer first every time. So how do we do that? Um, we try to guarantee a frictionless um, on-page experience for our customers and go to focus on delivering a very high quality shopping experience to them. And to guarantee this, we always adopt the customer's perspective and try to actually focus on their needs. And then from there, we build the process on our website. And um, yeah, for us as CRM, um, we always try to communicate with our customers, not just at them. We don't just throw a bunch of emails at them and then never see what the response is. Um, our communication is guided by a cross-channel approach. Um, we go by um, our customer's life cycle. We always um, check their points where they're at in the life cycle journey that they have with us. And um, then we align the channels and pick the exact one that would be needed for their needs at this point in time. And then how do we receive an answer? Yeah, that's the engagement. Um, so we get data, and that's kind of the language that we speak to each other. And um, then we can decide to go over again and choose the next communication point and pick the next channel to communicate with them. One of them would be print. <laughs> So um, as we have heard, and maybe we need to change the battery on this one, um, yeah, this is kind of a scenario that most of you have pretty much seen. So coming home, seeing your post box, 
filled with stuff which is unnecessary, not really wanted, and does not really communicate any relevant content to you. So this is totally not what we are talking about. So um, sending out a non-personalized catalog, which is super expensive, doesn't really fit the customer's needs, is, n is not um, the approach that print will be run as of now and for the future. So. Um, thinking about customer centricity, of course, what does it mean? You want to communicate at the right time to engage with your customer, of course, with the right content to also create a back and forth communication and figuring out um, who of my customer is responsive through what kind of channel in the best ways. And running the direct mail channel, which some may say is a dead channel or really old fashioned to run it in a digital approach. So how do we do that? thinking of being agile and automated. So um, communicating with your customer to the, to the right time, within the right channel, um, taking into consideration what have your customers purged, what kind of um, behavior have they shown, and take this into consideration when thinking about creating the content and also communicating the right content in the right time through the right channel with omni omnichannel integration. So thinking of maybe I will go into the, the first approach via the email. Does the customer respond yes or no? And what can I go with the next steps? Do I maybe send an app notification? Will I send an email reminder or going uh, for the uh, direct mail channel? Is it dead now? No. Okay. <laughs> Magic. So, well, how does customer centricity work in direct mail? And this is where Marit will give us the insights from Flakoni. <laughs> yeah, uh, we've tried a bunch of things throughout the time. Uh, we mostly di differentiate between um, a batch mailing and also an automated mailing. That means a batch mailing would be um, communicating with customers about something that happens to all of them at the same time, for example, like a holiday or, I don't know, the summer is coming, something that you can put out to everyone. And for the automated lifecycle campaigns um, or print campaigns, we uh, pick an event that happens to a group of people at the same time. For example, if it's your birthday, it's a very special day, but it, there are a couple people whose birthday is at the same time. So you are in that one group of people, but you feel special and we feel you're special. So we send you a card and congratulate you and also offer you a voucher for our online shop. And yeah, that could also happen to something at a point in time that you are not even aware of. Um, for example, if you bought for the 10th time with us, which is very special to us, I mean, that's, that's a very close relationship that we have with each other, but you didn't really notice, um, that's why we tell you. We send you a 10th purchase thank you note and make you aware to make you feel special and valued by us as you are. Yeah, throughout our customer's life cycle, we have a whole bunch of um, communications that we tried out um, through time from um, the lead activation they just signed up um, about, like, maybe they abond abandoned their card. We try to reach out to them. We welcome them. But we mainly focus on three campaigns currently, which is birthday, um, thank you for the tense purchase, and also reactivation. So at that point in time, we already know it enough about our customer to communicate um, efficiently. So and as you mentioned already, maybe creating a special moment, even though the customer does not really think that it is a special moment. And with thinking about this, as mentioned, 10th purchase, um, you have maybe a higher uh, segmentation on this, but thinking of even clustering it down. So 10th purchase, but what has been, for example, the average order value per customer, and then going into that deeper with different kind of incentives, for example. Yeah, also we test a lot. We heard that's important today. Um, <laughs> for example, um, we started out with a regular postcard. You get that in your mailbox and you already know what it is. You already see our face, our logo on it, and um, it's not really a secret anymore. But then um, we started testing um, if we could up the performance if we put the postcard into an envelope, um, which is kind of a little more surprising for people what might be in there, could be a bill, maybe you did something wrong, better <laughs> open this. So they already engaged with it, right? Um, 
So this actually upped their performance by 40% conversion rate upgrade. So yeah, now we only send out stuff in envelopes. I'm thinking about, the, I mean, of course, there are various kind of formats you can think of. Something we show here on, on the um, right side is the kind of a self-mailer, which we are really proud of, is um, to be able to send out a uh, digital printing, which means it's fast, and you have the ability to even um, uh, personalize on, on a really high scale when, when you're thinking about more traditional senders of postal things like catalogs, for example, you have 100 pages or even more, which, is, which kind of shows um, your whole product range, but might not be relevant to the customer. So give here a really um, high personalized example of your products, but which fit um, the customer's affinity. Yeah, something we already tested last year is, um, because we are a very young company, we kind of missed the age of catalog. Um, <laughs> It's kind of sad that we missed it, but we were able to do a, like, a way better version of a catalog. For example, you could rip out the pages that you are most interested in in a catalog and only look at them. You wouldn't have to scroll through it. Um, so we actually tried out um, personalization. I mean, we have a lot of personalization already within the text or on the uh, voucher code, but we tested um, putting our customers' most relevant products on the mailing, so they would actually have a very tiny catalog uh, with the, uh, the products that they actually care about, maybe their favorite brands, maybe their most uh, purchased products. And yeah, that was also very interesting for us to test out with Optilize. So well, as we have heard, and we, we do already know, there is not one specific a channel for CRM which fits all needs all the time and it's definitely wrong and we don't say that the direct mail channel will um, ease out all of your problems. Of course we have email which we know is easy to set up, it's fast, it's cheap but it requires an opt-in and we all know well con uh, the opening rates vary. Um, yeah, the app, if you have one, is super fast, it's kind of cheaper, you um, generate higher conversion rates, but at first hand, of course, it requires the download. And then direct mail channel, one definitely um, advantage of it is that you don't need an opt-in, it converts over time and has really high conversion rates, but of course, compared to all the others, it's definitely slower, and um, it's, yeah, definitely more expensive, even if we, if we just think about, about the postage cost. So thinking about when to use um, the direct mail channel. Yeah, I mean, I hate to say this, we're talking about direct mail, but we mostly try to avoid it because it's <laughs> very expensive. But avoiding it me doesn't mean that we don't want to do it. It means that we want to do it at the perfect time because, I mean, we're, we're investing in it. And um, one example for that would be in our journey for a customer um, would be our reactivation campaign because it's the most cross-channel approach we have that includes direct mail. Um, I mean, our customers start. This is when they sign in. Maybe they have an opt-in for email. Maybe they don't. Legally, we can approach them when they have no opt-in. We decide to only communicate with our customers with an opt-in. Um, yeah, with an email, you can do all kinds of things with them. They can get a newsletter every day. Um, you can approach them on all the other channels, on social media, on the website. Um, and then you have all the data about their value, right? Um, you know how many times they purchase, how much they spend, if they keep coming back to you, and then for us, they qualify for direct mail, right? Uh, so in reactivation, we try to reactivate everyone, um, but they go through a pretty lengthy process of emails already, and the last step would be sending out the direct mail to people that are most valuable to us, that we really want to come back. So, yeah. And that actually helps us because then we can reach them at home. It doesn't get lost in a flood of emails that they already have. I mean, we tried to talk to them, but now we're here. We are on your kitchen table. Hey, don't you want to come back to us? <laughs> so actually, Marit has summarized in, a, in the most perfect way to when to think about uh, sending out direct mail. So considering on what um, stage of customer lifecycle are you with your customer, what, how deep is the customer relationship, and also considering the customer value for you as a company. 
So even if you have set up one journey and implement also the direct mail channel and think, well, this will be the perfect setup for this time, always keep in mind things are changing, things are evolving. So continuous optimization is definitely the key and to, to be tested and continuously um, being improved. Yeah, I mean, um, every channel has their challenges. Some people might call them problems. We don't, and we call them challenges, especially because we have such a good partner and Optilize that always tries to listen to us and see what uh, kind of issues you might run into in our journey. So some of the things that people might be worried about are the delivery, because you can't really see. With emails, you always have an opening rate, a click rate. You don't know if it actually gets to your customer's house. Um, you don't always... Um, know if they get like maybe multiple mailings. It's kind of a lot if you get more than one direct mail at home a week. So, I mean, we have filters that avoid that. Um, you want to be sure that the addresses are really clean. Optilize has a very good method to do that for us. I mean, an email is just a one field of information, so you can't really go wrong there. But for an address, there can be so many things that are just not working for mail delivery. So yeah, we really <laughs> rely on Optilize for that. Also, it's very difficult for us to track the KPIs for um, direct mail. As I already said, you can't see if it's been delivered. You can't see if it's been open. Can't really put like a tiny camera in the envelope and see the reaction that we get. So I mean, we decided to use voucher codes for that so we can see um, how many people actually directly use the vouchers on direct mail to purchase with us. I mean, that's not really 100%, but we're getting there. And yeah, we continuously test. Some other things that you might uh, consider when it comes to uh, tracking, some other elements that I've seen in, in my daily business with other customers is, for example, a dedicated contact details such as emails or, or phone numbers. There's a thing which is called fax, but I don't know if it's still alive. So this is something that I see, um, for example, for B2B cases, but also if you're combining online and offline, there you have the chance to also print um, a barcode on, on top of it, or if you want to promote app downloads, also use um, a QR codes and also yeah, have, having the opportunity to generate um, further um, reactions through such kind of elements. Well, at the end, of course, you will generate brand awareness. Maybe you will pay into your customer's relationship. But of course, in the end, it's about, um, about uh, um, the results such which will lead to um, potential um, revenue. So using the direct mail channel in an um, automated approach with, with uh, the support of a software, we, you will decrease uh, in decrease, hopefully not, <laughs> but you will uh, increase your conversion rates up to 50% with um, conducting more relevant use cases to specific target groups at the, at the right time and decrease your manual effort, um, which is definitely really thankful for all of us to have more time to actually um, think about uh, adjusting, direct, um, adjusting customer journeys and going more into um, kind of yeah, the creative part behind all of it. And so we have had quite an insight um, from Flaconi about the status quo. So Marit, well, what's next? Yeah, we hope uh, direct mail is not dying in the next few years, as it's not dead now. We already uh, made sure. Um, yeah, we will continue to trust in data, as always. <laughs> I mean, we want to stay agile, and if we see that stuff is not working anymore, then we might not do it anymore. But if we can find potential to even increase what we're doing, then we will always do that. Just trust in data. Yeah, and we will always work on our filters to make sure that we maybe can um, f maybe filter our customers more to see if they're maybe more inclined to respond to offline communication. I mean, there are a lot of older customers as well. You can't really forget about them and only trust in, in, in online communication. So that's why we want to stay open to that. And yeah, we will definitely send out a batch mailing this year for the holiday season. So that's going to be another highlight. 
So thank you, Sana. I'm relieved that you are still believing in the channel, so as we do, and of course, yeah, I'm running it out of your um, marketing clouds, using the data that you have, so you are already providing on-site personalization, you will um, personalize the email communication that you have, so using all this information and all the data that you have about your customer from uh, former purchases and from its affinity and buying behavior, you are able uh, with, with the Optilize platform to um, use all these details to um, uh, personalize all your physical mailings that you would like to send out with us. So everybody, thank you very much for coming by and listening to us and feel free to ask any questions that you may have. We have a couple of questions already. Oh, that's <laughs> <Yes>. awesome. <laughs> I saw them coming in. OK, um, the first one is, how do you contact people via direct, direct mail when you don't have their opt-in? Um, I said this earlier. I mean, uh, opt-in is something that currently is still mostly online. It's possible to contact people via direct mail without an opt-in legally, but we don't. I mean. Yeah, we chose to um, only focus on that. Exactly. So uh, whenever you have the actual address of a person, you are allowed to um, target them via the direct mail channel. But of course, there's always a disclaimer on, on the format that you're sending out. So whenever you don't wish to receive um, postal mailings anymore, please contact and then the dedicated um, contact details. The difference is if you have an explicit opt out, then even that is not allowed legally anymore. Exactly. Uh, the next question is, how do you update the address data of, of your customers? Um, that's pretty easy because we send out stuff to them. So we <laughs> continuously <laughs> get the address because they really profit from that. Otherwise, they wouldn't get their packages, and that's how we But have it's definitely it. a topic that I see really, really often about the data quality, and customers are asking, well, what is if somebody is moving or s somebody, unfortunately, has died or, or married and there was a name change? So we don't, um, we don't collect any of the data that our customers are processing, processing with us, but there are special services where you can get all the updated information regarding the addresses from the Deutsche Post, by the way. Um, the next question is, you're using voucher codes for tracking. Are you not concerned to give the impression that there will always be a voucher code offer with a result of band, brand erosion? Yes, maybe. Um, there, people might expect that there always is a voucher code, but they can't really be sure. Because especially for the direct mail, um, it doesn't go out that much. I mean, you have a birthday every year, but everything else doesn't happen as frequently. They wouldn't get as many um, direct mailings from us, so they might not really, um, really get too used to having a voucher code from there. And also, this is how we currently do it, but we're already planning uh, to change that up in the, in the coming month. So whoever thought they could rely on a mailing, <laughs> it's not always going to be like this. <laughs> Uh, the next one is, I guess that most direct mailings include almost oh, uh, always a voucher. Do you have a use case that worked well without a voucher and added value to you and the customer? Not yet, because um, that was the only way we could uh, actually track the performance so far. So we are excited to test that out soon. Something that we uh, see mostly in B2B businesses, so where it's not really common to work with any kind of incentivation. We have so many questions. Do we have time? For we, we will make time, please. <laughs> OK. Um, thanks for sharing with us. At what point do you use direct mail for reactivation? What are the criteria to move into the segment? Um, that's a very specific question. I'm going to be a little vague about that because, we, I mean, we have some trade secrets. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, you go through the whole process of reactivation. Direct mail would be the last step. And like I said, you would have to um, have a certain customer value to fall into the segment. So you would be end of reactivation and also very valuable. Um, Um. 
maybe the last one. Why do you use um, mailings in an envelope when those just um, obtain, uh, receive 40% uplift? Maybe this was not quite clear on, on the slide because it's actually you were um, generating uplifts when sending out a, um, a direct mail and then um, testing to send it in an envelope and compared yeah. to the to the single send out without envelope, you added up to 40% on the conversion rate. Yeah, yeah, that right. was an uplift from an uplift. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think that's, that's all for now, yeah. That's all for now, so thank you very much Everyone, um, yeah, enjoy the rest of, of the day. And please feel free to talk to us when you see us running through the floors here. Yeah.